everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and today on Hot Mode we are going to be talking about Chanel's Resort 2021 collection, a wholly digitally debuted collection and the first among some of the biggest fashion heavy hitters. With the world in a state of still somewhat disarray, depending on your geographical location, fashion has been heavily hit. There's less functions requiring red carpet dresses, Zoom calls don't even require pants, and if you're not leaving the house, what do you need a handbag for? But while the wider industry like the Council of Fashion Designers of America and the British Fashion Council amongst independent designers like Dries Van Noten have called for reform of the wasteful industry whose retail timeline leads to massive discounts right before the season the clothing is actually being made for, brands like Chanel still seem to be set on producing at least six collections a year. While many have called for a slowdown, Chanel has the manpower, or woman power, and money to speed it up while the competition is halted. And the whole debacle around Chanel raising its handbag prices in the midst of a pandemic due to alleged raw materials price hikes revolving around coronavirus, eh, you know, they're just doing them. But Chanel is the first of the global luxury brands to dip its toe in the mid-corona fashion content. In reality, Chanel has rolled out its first fully digital collection, which to me means there has been for the first time no in-person showing of the looks except for a few editors, which are on like a one-by-one -one basis. There's no fashion show, which is the first time in Chanel history. The collection was explained to editors through virtual accessorizations, according to Vogue, instead of the usual in-person appointments the brand usually uses. Instead of showing their collection in a runway format, they decided to unveil only a lookbook shoot and video featuring 51 looks. And of course, many of you know that cruise collections for large brands like Chanel is a way for them to whisk some of their highest paying customers off to exotic locations. This season was supposed to be a trip to the Italian island off the coast of Naples, Capri, the home of the Blue Grotto. I watched a documentary about the whole island. It was cute, I'll link in the description, you're welcome. And well, considering what the collection looks like, I'm happy nobody wasted air miles and jet fuel trying to show it off. As you have realized from my previous videos about Virginie Viard's Chanel, it's terribly boring. It's derivative of the clothing hanging on the racks of fast fashion retailers and has no actual sense of grandeur. And with a 5-15% to 15 bag price hike, Chanel has a lot of fucking grandeur. But alas, let's get into this 51 look attempt at a coronavirus collection. Mika Arganaraz debuted the first look, a finely woven black jacket with nautical striped bandeau underneath, which was cinched with a two-tone rope belt. A slouchy pant in black as well as a pair of sandals definitely helps to show us the locale is meant to be warm and casual. But the look isn't anything to keep us interested. It's just simple clothing, which is fine, but that's what you were thinking we should celebrate in Capri? Next, we see a simple bubblegum tweed jacket, tweed being a Chanel signature, with a sweet little white jacket and shorts underneath. I do have to say I love the detail of the black leather piping bouncing off the white set. Virginie does seem to focus on details like this, so it's something I've come to appreciate about her time at Chanel. You gotta find the little things, you know what I mean? But fuck those ugly Mary Janes. Oh, and a bag? Very nautical? I can get into it. See, now this is cute. I don't know, I just love the leather, but if we're gonna do basics, at least make the textiles look good, right? I love the little leather jacket with black piping. I wonder what the inspiration is. Too bad Virginie isn't calling my ass to discuss on a virtual accessorization. I do love the addition of the leather shorts, but couldn't care less about the little black and gold chain bucket bag. Okay, I do love a crisp white look, which feels very nautical as well, and the white is great for those trying to keep keep it cool in the sun. The fabric is this waffle weave sweater and capri pant with black piping, two Chanel bangles, a continuation to the brand's history of costume jewelry, and a white and black flat bag. Again, there's nothing revolutionary going on, but it does feel very classic Chanel. Also, capri pants for the capri collection. I, I finally got it. The denim is where I draw the line in this collection though. There is a pair of high-waisted flare pants that are spliced to include a black and white print of the Chanel logo and the classic brand flower, which is camellias. This just feels very sad. 
Sorry. If you're gonna experiment with denim, it better be good or just make a luxe pair of high-waisted flares. No need to ruin a perfectly good pair by adding a fugly print so people purchasing can flaunt a brand in other people's faces. Paired with them is a graphic black and white waffle weave sweater and pink button down. Don't get me started on the gross bag. I understand this off the shoulder printed top. The silhouette is very popular for the young demographic and we see those awful jeans reappear, but I can't believe they desecrated a triangle tote bag like that with those depressing camellias. Firstly, I know it's a brand signature, but maybe we introduce a new flower to add to the Chanel legacy. So now you see what I'm dealing with when I talk about this denim. Virginie and her team allegedly made this collection in only three weeks which some might give her credit for. But I personally don't wanna see a poorly fitted pair of denim like this and then be expected to give the designer a pat on the back. Pull an Azadine Alaya and show the collection whenever you want instead of putting out abysmally fitted jeans with ugly pink tweed stripes that look like a roadmap to the vagina. What is that style called? The pussy pathway? Like people, come on! Also, who wants to spend upwards of $1,000 for poorly fitted jeans? Burn the slides, I don't care they sell, they're ugly and boring and not made interesting at all. Listen, the girls can make interesting slides, they can make interesting sandals, but those, we know who you're trying to, we know, we know who you're trying to sell to. Also, the sequin banjos are actually quite sweet and seem like a nice way to bring a technique that's considered more mature and give it a bit of a younger twist. I love these two pink silk short suits. The blazer on the first definitely allows the darker pink look to have a more professional feel. Maybe something worn to a fancy restaurant in Capri. The shorts allow for that more relaxed feel and obviously help with ventilation, which is important in the summer sun. It's accessorized with a triangle tote bag in the same shade with shag grid motif. I will say the triangle tote is not exactly original though because I've been seeing it from MM6, which is the Margiela Diffusion line for years, but it might have a longer history than that. The lighter silk short suit is a bit more casual and even reminds me of a Cuban collar shirt style. The Cuban collar was popularized in the 1950s and is known for its open notch lapel-like collar, short sleeves, and a straight boxy hem seen here, but elevated by these rolled up sleeves. The sequin flat bag and sandals feel very blah though, and also we should note that Chanel did do a whole cruise collection in Cuba. The two boxy skirt sets with sequin bras are Yikes. The jackets are fine, but the fold in the skirts create a weird line that your eye is drawn to. And I really can't understand if this was done for a technical reason that went right over my head, but it just seems very unnecessary. Maybe it accentuates the hips, but I feel like there are other ways to do that. Here is a nice pastel yellow look. The jacket is sweet and so are the pants. Nothing revolutionary, but in the midst of a pandemic, most probably aren't buying to be outlandish. The shaggy jacket is a nice play with texture and here except for the bracelets the costume jewelry doesn't necessarily make me want to whack my head on the tiny entrance to the blue grotto something else i've come to notice is virginie loves a bare breasted jacket look and personally i enjoy it she's done it at spring 2020 couture and fall 2020 recently and it feels like the most button pushing styling choice she's made during her time at Chanel, which is kind of disappointing, but I'm gonna take what I can get. Carly Loyce's look here continues to push my theory that Virginie is really trying to speak to a younger customer. The halter top is definitely a favorite of the younger crowd, and while there is an ongoing resurgence of some women over 50 getting into halters too, I can't help feel it's trying to tap into this new generation of people who take style cues from the likes of Emma Chamberlain and Ricky Thompson. Tight crop tops and baggy high-waisted pants is the look of the youth, no? The next look just reads Victoria's Secret and Chanel collaboration collection. This look weirdly feels very Target X Chanel, but I kind of don't mean that as an insult. Here's my theory. This is something I could easily see selling out at Target. It's easy, and if Chanel is making it with higher quality materials, why not get a more luxe version if you can afford it? Chanel right now is trying not to hemorrhage money, which I think everyone is trying to not do. So this collection is, and will always be, something pretty commercial, and in reality, it feels very leisurely, like something perfect for those who will be living it up in country houses over the summer and fall. So while it's absolutely basic, most people are only buying clothes to suit their needs in a coronavirus world, which is to feel comfortable. 
at home, hopefully. Again, the devil is in the details with Virginie, and I love the shag motif that's raised off the fabric. It feels very microbial and creates a very delicate look from afar. Also, I'm pretty positive it's a bunch of camellias and a jacquard, but I'm not positive. I also think the cut of the jacket and the short shorts do create a sort of modern, old world style. Like the 1960s Reborn in 4K. A squad of white looks emerged. Carly Lois in a sweet floral A-line day dress. Revolutionary? No. But I'm sure there will be customers for it. The sunnies though, c'est bon. A woman's navy uniform look-alike emerged, as well as a jet set white safari jacket and flare pants, which gave off a 1970s vibe and reminds me a bit of Yves Saint Laurent's safari looks from the decade. And honestly, it's really nice. The perfect white dress is then presented in a tight white floral lace, with the lace helping to perfectly accentuate the waist. And to me, this look is Virginie's answer to those looking for a bit more coverage with a light maxi skirt, which allows a long slit with Chanel buttons and a boxy long sleeve top. I just don't think it's very flattering though. Virginie is really about showing some skin with an exposed side bodysuit that presents a more modern camellia motif. And I really like the wide leg pants, but I think the ruffle is unnecessary. And I think the silhouette is actually really reflective of the younger generation, which is nice. And I'll be honest, this is a nice little black dress. Coco Chanel's little black dress has always been a signature of the brand, but it never really vava voomed me during Carl's time. And for those that don't know, Coco Chanel, who was definitely in bed with Nazis, did create this dress that revolutionized the world in 1926. But the simplicity of the dress, with the flowy halter top and asymmetrical skirt, feels chic and clean and wearable, like Coco's back in the 1920s. If Virginie could start really revolutionizing the little black dress again, I'd be very happy. Two denim capri pants followed, one paired with an awful Chanel printed top and bad bandana belt, the other in the classic white turtleneck. Neither interesting, but could they sell? I guess. Here again, we have a set that is reminiscent of a bathing suit, something I'm sure will be on the shopping list of those stuck at home with lots of money to spend. You can never have too many high-end swimming costumes. It contains that modern chameleon motif and adds a black and white chevron sort of stripe. The tiny bag, another trend Viard has latched onto, as well as the jewelry belt, don't help push it into the interesting stratosphere, but it's commercial enough. I do hate juxtaposed colors and motifs, an example being this look, unless they actually have a purpose. See, now someone like Gianni Versace was a master and it was part of his design journey to mix total opposites together. And he had a gift, but I don't know if it's the same here for Virginie. Listen, if two pieces don't look good together, don't force it. It's like a dick that's too big. It's never gonna fit the way you want. While the next look was a woven two-piece set in large stripes, the woven wicker bag was the real point of interest. For what must be one of the first times in the history of Chanel, a handbag has been carried over from one collection to another. The vanity case comes in at 4,600 US dollars and is available for purchase online right now. It's not a notable bag, but I guess it fits in with the theme of vacation vacation, while also playing into Virginie's idea of sustainability. She said, and I quote to Vogue, I love it. Why would we have to do another one? So I guess they, she, uh, she wants to reuse bags and call it sustainability. Carly stuns in a long navy blue and black cardigan and bathing set version of the Camellia Jacquard. The weave, like its pink twin, is quite sweet, but the attached triangle tote bag and slides are blah. While the blue triangle tote would have been better suited with the previous look, the taken in top with double C logo is regrettable. The skirts with one sharp gathering seem to be explored in top form with the shirt fitting tightly below the waist and looser above. Is this Virginie's small way of playing with clothing construction? I hope not. Next, we'll just call it Claire's clearance and let's move on. Coco Chanel was also famous for her work with simpler fabrics like Jersey, but in a more couture manner. I mean, nothing about this jersey dress is going to make Virginie Viard famous, but the silver strips that juxtapose themselves against the sheer black is quite sweet. The decolletage has some strange colorful beading, but the tied fabric around the waist at least helps to create shape. 
Now, I do think I like this next dress, and it's probably one of the most formal looks from the collection. It's black with a wraparound halter in a black sheer, lightly shiny fabric that has pockets, perfect for the woman on the go, or the woman trying to transport snacks from the kitchen to the poolside. I mean, the bangles are still ugly, and those shoes are downright hideous, and it's outrageous they'll try and charge over $1,000 for them. And the asymmetry of the hem is one thing that is making me question my sanity. Molly Goddard said, bitch better have my funny VR. Also, the look is just like disturbing. Like this is Chanel? I'll pass. An oil slick of black looks then appear, quickly ushering us to the end of the collection, and they weren't too bad. The first has a sequin bandeau and black shorts, but has sheer overlays that create an ethereal little vibe. And the style gets a blazer version with sheer skirt. Then a longer version of the first sheer overlay look appeared and was nice as well. The half sheer blazer and capri yoga pants were atrocious and so was the matching short set. Again, I need hope, not a look into a depressed Midwestern mom's summer wardrobe virginity. Finally, a sequin black mini wrap dress channels the 1960s Brigitte Bardot summer aesthetic that Virginie Viard wanted the Chanel collection to exude. But it doesn't mean the dress is captivating, and again, I need hope. Couldn't we have just one look, the finale look, that gives us all a taste of what Virginie sees as the future for us all? Maybe that's too much to ask a designer, but in a time of crisis, hope is all you really have. You know what, maybe this look is her seeing into the future. Everything's gonna just be a hot fucking mess. Now, Virginie Viard was quoted as saying to Women's Wear Daily, the references are always the same. Holidays, actresses. It's charming, sexy, easy, and refined. But was it really charming? Maybe in the manner it was shot, due to the photo's crispness and videos attached, it had a campaign quality to it. But the clothing left me feeling far from charm. Was it sexy? I wanted to say maybe if you're blind, but the visually impaired community deserves a lot more respect than that. It was definitely easy. It ties into Chanel trying to keep themselves from bleeding out financially, but most brands took crews and what would be spring 2021 off, maybe to try and rework their own formulas. But Chanel obviously doesn't feel the need to. As for refined, that one is truly laughable. The styling of the shoot is mismatched and there are garments that are ill-fitting and styled on models in uneven ways. It's far from refinement. And considering Virginie and her team made the clothes in only three weeks, it's even more hilarious that she would call the collection refined. That's like calling Zara fast couture. It just doesn't sit right with me. This industry needs a change and piss poor digital launches of collections are not what the doctor ordered. So with that, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on the next one and TTYL.